And today I'm going to present the case of DR. He's a 68-year-old gentleman presenting to the ER with acute urinary retention. So he presented to the ER with 14 hours of inability to avoid. He did have a preceding history of lower urinary tract symptoms, including weak stream, straining to void, um, and nocturia, which was progressive over the matter of months. He didn't have any uh, dysuria or any new medications. He had no prior GU history, has never seen a urologist before, or been prescribed any uh, uh, urologic medications. Uh, as is our routine in the ER, he had a catheter placed and was sent home uh, with follow-up in urology in a week. His past medical history, significant for peptic ulcer disease, we don't have the details of that. He had no surgeries. He was a former smoker, 40-pack year history, and had no family history of GU malignancies. He was on uh, baby aspirin for primary prevention. On review of systems, uh, when pressed, he did note a history of fevers, chills, activity change, uh, anorexia, and weight loss over the preceding couple of months. He did have some atypical chest pain that was worked up during his retention episode in the ER uh, with a negative x-ray and uh, EKG interponents. He additionally had some shoot shooting pains and sensory changes down his legs. On, on a physical examination, he uh, was older than, appeared older than stated age. He was hard of hearing and his family spoke for him. He had a 16 French catheter in place uh, that was draining turbid, foul-smelling urine. He had a, a phimosis and balanopositis with the tender glands. His digital rectal exam was remarkable for a rock-hard and large prostate without dominant nodules. On laboratory examination, he did not have a leukocytosis. His uh, liver fun function tests, uh, specifically alkaline phosphatase, was normal. And his PSA was 9. He did have a urine culture at that time, which revealed gram-negative rods. So Dr. Albertson, we have a 68-year-old gentleman with acute urinary retention and an abnormal digital rectal exam. All right, this is the type of patient where I start with, tell me what urination was like a month before this episode. Yeah, so he, he reports a progressive uh, worsening of LUTs over the preceding two months. Um, again, he's 68 years old. When he was 60, he stated he avoided fines. This isn't the guy who went to the Virginia football game and uh, got to, didn't get to the men's room on time and went into acute retention. So was he in acute pain when he couldn't go, or was it something? Yes, that, yeah. Right, so we got someone who normally can avoid and finally something different over the edge. We got a urinary tract infection that could be certainly due to residual. Um, it's unusual to have foul smelling urine one week after no problem at all, so mm -hmm. we probably had a good job before we started. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the situation described though is with someone who's had a catheter for a long period of time, so mm -hmm. I'm already smelling this is not your typical urinary retention case. So, okay. Um, <coughs> We want to get. We want to know what the bugs are. So you have sensitivities from that. It's one week after the ER visit. So yeah. You have sensitivity. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it was mixed gram negative rods. Unfortunately, they didn't speciate them further, or get sensitivities. All right. So you probably want to send them off for culture. You probably want to know what the bugs are before you start doing too much uh, active intervention. I'll probably want to scope it in the office. I'm not sure I want to do it today. Uh, so I'm going to drain off some of that urine. Um, I might irrigate the uh, catheter a little bit to get the, most of the gross stuff out and get it drained a little better. Uh, but I want to know what my bugs are and I want to have my antibiotics all set to go. Um, I'm still thinking BPH, the rock hard prostate. Talk to me a little more about that. Is it tender? Is it not? Are it, 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 is, of it is non tender, non fluctuant. So you're thinking There's prostate cancer hard or what do you think? That was the initial. F my initial sense on the digital rectal exam. But well, with a PSA of eight, it could be. Uh, so it's a high-grade disease and weight loss and everything could point to a chronic disease, could point to a cancer. I'm still not quite enough. So let's start with uh, cultures, find out, remove the catheter for avoiding trial, but have them schedule them where I'm doing a cystoscopy in the morning that he's coming in. So at least I'm going to replace the 
catheter without too much, uh, at a low threshold for replacing his catheter, okay. and then re examine his prostate once he's been on uh, antibiotics for a week. Okay. So we. Um, Close to what you did? We did close to that, and we, uh, he underwent a successful voiding trial. Um, because of the episode of acute urinary retention, we started on a sure combination. The a <laughs> um, he also was treated for his urinary tract infection. We resent the culture. He is not diabetic, no. And we treated his uh, balanopastitis. <clears throat> So he returned six weeks after catheter removal for a recheck of his PSA and his digital rectal exam. He reported no voiding trials whatsoever at this time. Um, no, uh, he had no further UTI on, on your analysis. His post void residual was zero. His PSA had come down to 5.25 from nine six weeks ago, and that was after initiation of finasteride. And his digital rectal exam, unfortunately, was unchanged. He, Still had a, uh, about a hundred gram uh, rock hard, non tender, non fluctuant uh, prostate. So now we have a 68 year old gentleman who had an episode of acute urinary retention, has an abnormal DRE, and a PSA of 5.25. All right, Dr. I would have had him on tangelosin versus the finasteride. Is that, am I missing something? We had him on both. And you stopped the tangelosin the middle? No, we, we, had, we kept him on both. You just forgot to yeah. write it? Well, I just put that the, the, the 5.25 was may have been augmented by the finasteride. Ah. It's an interesting question. I'm not sure how fast the finasteride brings that down. Yeah, we, so maybe that's what you're looking into the literature, most, most trials have looked at three months. But yeah. at six weeks, it's unclear what kind of uh, effect it would have. And he's a happy camper? He's, he's happy now, asymptomatic. Asymptomatic, so all we're left with is a rectal exam that you're not happy with. Correct. All right, uh, this is where I find time is a wonderful marker here. So let's, let's have him come back in another month or two and check a PSA. Okay. okay. <clears throat> we... We're a little more aggressive. We're a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow a suspect. But, uh, have to do. You notice our current theme here. <laughs> um, you know, intervention. We we physicians love intervention and forgets times come sometimes guide us on the right direction. Yes, sir. Couldn't stand it, so yeah, you whipped out the alpha sign and guided the bias. Yeah, and so you know the findings on ultrasound were. Uh, you know, 80 to 100 gram prostate. Uh, there were some central calcifications, but an unremarkable peripheral zone. Uh, the one thing that was remarkable about the biopsy is each time we tried to take a core, it bent the tip of the needle. It was almost impossible to get a core unless we did an absolute perpendicular angle of the gland. So the pathology returned uh, high, high grade uh, prostate cancer in uh, six of six cores on the right and four or six cores on the left involving greater than 80% of the tissue right. with market. my comment earlier, bad cancers don't make PSA. Yeah. So, um, and so I, I knew you would find one or the other of these things. And to me, is a two month delay uh, gonna make a difference clinically? Yeah. Probably not. Hence my comment about you, you wanted to see him back, mm -hmm. uh, but did you do, do biopsy immediately? We did it and we got this. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is where a metastatic survey is critical, even though the PSA is negligible because you could have widespread mets and not know it. So don't rely on the PSA. So you did a long time on CT? Uh, yes, we actually did a, a, a PET uh, sodium uh, fluoride 18. Did you get more money for that? Than the no, <laughs> but we were. it was part of a trial that ah, he, was, uh, okay. he was enrolled into. So instead of a planar uh, bone scan, uh, he got this uh, combination. So you see throughout the axial skeleton, um, particularly the vertebral bodies of the T and L spine, as well as some ribs. He has numerous blastic lesions consistent with metastatic prostate cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, no. So we. Uh, uh, yes, discuss anti therapy. This yeah. is uh, you've got final mess. Yes. This is my comment earlier that what disaster do you wish to avoid is a sacrificial body collapse. Mm -hmm. To me, this is uh, it's time to begin and proceed with uh, LH charge agonist. Um, so I actually agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, the problem you face is you don't have the usual marker. Mm -hmm. So in terms of response, uh, maybe the PSA went down a little bit, but you have to be extraordinarily sensitive to a little bump that maybe be evidence of non-response. Mm -hmm. And that's where, in this case, having follow-up imaging might be much, much more frequent than you would normally consider, in part to pick up when you have resistant disease because you know people have it. Okay. So you started with an LHRH yep. and you Simultane Simultaneous anti-androgen. And we uh, started them on denosumab as well, trying to the PSAs. We followed up in one month, um, in which, at which time he had further improvement of his constitutional symptoms, avoiding symptoms. His testosterone was uh, undetectable. His PSA was down to 0.7 from 5. He uh, continued on the LHRH agonist, and uh, uh, every three months, um, so he had a nadir of uh, 0 0.06, and then uh, kind of a gradual uh, increase um, with a PSA doubling time, if you can calculate off of those low values of about six months. He remained asymptomatic at that time. Due to the uh, rising PSA, he was offered cipulosal T, but declined. He was, he was minimum. Um, unfortunately, however, he was found down by his neighbors 13 months after diagnosis, and um, with this, so it's unclear if that was a metastatic uh, deposit or not. Prostate cancer rarely crosses the blood-brain barrier. Nope, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>